What's the scariest space fact slash mystery in your opinion? Astronomer here. There are a lot of things posted here that are not really likely to happen anytime soon or affect your life on Earth much. So if you want something to worry about, may I introduce you to the Carrington event of 1859. Basically, Carrington was a scientist who noticed a flash from a huge cluster of sunspots, which was the biggest coronal mass ejection from the sun ever recorded, aka a ton of material ejected from the sun at high speeds. It hit Earth within a day. Auroras were seen as far south as Hawaii. Wires on telephone poles burst into flames, and telegraph operators even reported contacting each other when not connected. If a similar event were to strike Earth today, it would cause billions of dollars in damage. Because blown transformers are super hard to replace, and a lot of satellites wouldn't be able to handle it. And it goes without saying you'd have a serious radio blackout for a bit until it ended on a ton of essential frequencies. The crazy thing about the Carrington event, though, is we really have no idea how often such events happen. But we do know that in 2012, there was a Carrington-level solar flare that barely missed Earth. Story 2. Here's one close to home. The Kessler effect is the theory that a single destructive event in low Earth orbit could create a cascade, where satellites break up into tiny fragments taking out other satellites, which then break up into smaller fragments and so on, until the Earth is completely surrounded by a massive cloud of tiny, flying death shrapnel, which would make leaving the planet almost impossible. If you look up how much space debris there is already up there, and how many satellites are currently in orbit, plus the continued growth of the commercial space industry, I think about it a lot. I know this is unrelated to this, but just the phrase commercial space industry kind of blew my mind. It's not something I think about at all, but it's possible within my lifetime, like maybe even likely. That's, that's nuts. Story 3. The Boots Void. An area of space where there should be 50,000 or so galaxies compared to other areas of the same size. But there are only 60. Could just be empty space for some unknown reason, or it could be an ever-expanding intergalactic empire using Dyson spheres. Also, I think it appears to be growing, but that could also just be galaxies moving away from the void. Story 4. Gamma Ray Bursts. We could be hit by one of these with very little warning, and if it was reasonably close, in universal terms anyway, could wipe us out rapidly or cause a ton of damage. Dark matter slash dark energy. The fact that about 95% of the universe is made up of matter we can't see or detect is pretty unsettling to think about. Also, while not a fact per se, I like to think that perhaps the answer to the Fermi paradox is that there are billions of advanced alien life forms out there, but they are physically unable to reach us due to technological limitations. Perhaps interstellar transport is only theoretical, and any aliens capable of reaching us are unable to do so in an acceptable length of time. Proxima Centauri may take 25 years for an unmanned spacecraft to reach us going 20% the speed of light, but perhaps it's impossible to transport actual life at these speeds without dying, so advanced civilizations have realized the futility of trying to contact other species and have simply given up. I gotta say, personally, gamma ray bursts are kinda freaky. But like, not the ones that would wipe out everything on Earth, cause at that point, you wouldn't know. Just the ones that would cause a lot of damage. Cause it could happen any moment, no warning really, and we would just have to take it. Story 5. What was before the Big Bang? I think it is just impossible for a human to comprehend pure nothing or infinity. I myself had a stroke at age 9 due to a ruptured vertebral artery and lost a third of my visual field. I can confirm it's not black. A good analogy is like what you see behind your head. On the other hand, infinity is so large that if you spent your whole life writing a 1 and then zeros on paper, that insane number you write would still be 0% of infinity. I just think there is no way to fully understand the universe, and there never will be. This is why even ancient societies explained things with gods, because they didn't understand how the reality we live in started, and I don't think we ever will. Story 6. Since the universe is expanding and stars and galaxies are moving away from each other, it's possible that civilizations that spring up in the far future with lonely stars will see an empty sky. Their civilizations will grow and learn, but they will never know the universe that once was. We live in a spectacular time period where we can actually look back in time and see the early universe. Future civilizations won't have that luxury. They'll believe that the universe is, and always was, dark, dead, and empty, aside from their small island of light. Story 7. The Great Attractor is kinda ominous. There's an exoplanet with wind that's many times the speed of sound and that rains glass. Another exoplanet that has spent time inside its star. There's a sort of fear that we aren't alone in the universe. 
chances are anything we meet won't have remotely similar emotional spectrums that we have. Then, there's the horrifying notion that we are alone in that infinite blackness. That we are just a fluke of chemistry that will probably never happen again. Story 8. The fact that an asteroid could come at any time, and even though we have the technology to tell us, what can we do about it? Nothing. We can do nothing. We can just sit here with the media stations telling us what will happen, telling our friends and loved ones goodbye, praying, whatever. It sucks. Why do we have the technology that tells us our inevitable doom is days or even moments away, but no technology to possibly stop it? Here it is, another one like the gamma ray bursts. At any point, we could just have this thing happen. And this one's even worse because we would know about it too. I feel like knowing that the inevitable doom is coming is significantly worse than it catching us by surprise. Here's just hoping that before it happens, we find a way to stop it, but it's not really that likely to be honest. Or maybe it is, maybe I'm pessimistic about science. We'll see. Story 9. Perhaps this isn't very fitting, as I don't think it's necessarily scary, but you know the multiverse theory? For those who don't, it essentially says that there's a whole bunch of universes. Some similar, some different. If there is something that should exist on Earth but doesn't, then it exists in an alternate universe. Spider-Man is real in an alternate universe, etc. But if the universe is infinite, then wouldn't everything possible happen within this infinite time slash space? Is the universe itself the multiverse? What if there's another Earth way, 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 way far out there that's entirely made of Legos with Lego people? And if the universe is the multiverse, then is science as we know it unreliable outside of our immediate area? Do physics work completely differently further out? Work by different formulas? What if there are living creatures out there that don't have a single cell in their bodies? Things that exist without a single atom. I mean, aren't black holes kind of that already? Who says reality as we know it applies to the entire universe? What if Thanos is actually real somewhere way out there? What if dreams are just somehow seeing alternate worlds? What if that King Kong-sized Buzz Lightyear that kidnapped me in a nightmare I had when I was young actually exists? Again, maybe not super scary, but I felt it was at least somewhat relevant. My man watched Into the Spider-Verse and his brain exploded. It's either that or it's just like the phase where you think about this stuff. I feel like most people have this phase where they think about this kind of multiverse like anything is possible, but at the end of the day, at least the way I see it, is its existence or not doesn't affect us in any way at all. And so, I'm just kinda chill with it. Story 10. Strange Matter. It might not exist at all, but some scientists believe it's what's inside neutron stars. If this is true, neutron stars can collide and send strange matter particles flying through space. It's also theorized that strange matter might turn everything it touches into strange matter. If that's true, any microscopic amount of strange matter that touches our atmosphere would quickly turn Earth and everything on it into strange matter, destroying all life and nearly every remnant of civilization. And there wouldn't be a damn thing we can do about it. Again, this is all theoretical. Strange matter might not have such a massive effect, and indeed it may not exist at all. But there is a non-zero chance that an undetectable, microscopic particle is flying toward Earth, ready to eradicate everyone and everything. Story 11. Space is big. More than people can easily grasp. I absolutely believe other intelligent life exists. I absolutely believe Earth-like planets with orbits in their star's habitable zone and liquid water exist. And I absolutely believe that with enough time, humanity will confirm the existence of both. I also believe manned spacecraft will never leave our solar system. The time and energy required just to reach orbit is massive. The resources necessary to keep a person alive in space are huge. Landing people on Mars is already viewed as a one-way trip and at its nearest pass, it's roughly 34 million miles from Earth. Voyager 1 has been traveling for 42 years and 9 months. It is just shy of 150 AU, astronomical units or mean distance of the Earth from the Sun, from home, or nearly 14 billion miles. It is just past the heliosphere of our Sun, or the point at which the Sun's solar wind no longer exerts enough influence to cast a bubble in the background interstellar radiation. This is considered interstellar space. As a frame of reference, the next star over Proxima Centauri is 268,770 AU from our Sun, or 25 trillion miles. Unless some kind of Einstein-Rosen bridge type of wormhole exists that we can travel, we are not going anywhere. Maybe I'm small-minded about this, but something about this is comforting to me. Maybe it's because, as OP says, my brain can't grasp how large space is, so it just doesn't try to. It just feels like humans trying to leave the solar system is just... We're getting too big for our britches. It's hubris. 
things will be bound to go wrong if we get to that point, and it's not really going to be worth it. At some point, although I know it's against human nature, we're probably just going to feel somewhat content with what we have, save for a few people who try to push things further, but they probably won't get much traction after a certain point. Story 12. The Boltzmann Brain. The most likely ending to our universe will be all stars and black holes exploding, and eventually the universe becomes a completely even soup of neutrons for all eternity. In this theory, the Big Bang was actually a cosmic coincidence, in which enough of those neutrons, literally every neutron that currently exists, collided in the even soup of a past universe. This collision caused the Big Bang to occur, thrusting into motion the energies that run our current universe. Such an occurrence in the soup of infinite neutrons is incredibly unlikely. What instead is far more likely is that just enough neutrons came together in the exact right way as to create a literal, floating brain in the infinite soup that has all of your memories and experiences up to the current moment. Statistically speaking, it is unfathomably more likely that nothing you've ever perceived exists, and instead, you are merely a floating brain in an endless expanse of nothing, doomed to return to the soup from whence you came, none the wiser. Being doomed to go back to the soup where I came from doesn't sound too bad, honestly. As far as ends of the world go, or at least the world as I know it in that case, sure. Soup sounds good. Story 13. A few years ago, a neutron star experienced a star quake, and for a brief moment, a crack formed in the star's ultra-dense outer shell, releasing a terrifying amount of energy. Even though the neutron star was thousands of light years away, the burst of mostly gamma rays traveled across the galaxy to damage the very satellites we set up to detect neutron stars, which wasn't something scientists thought could happen. If something similar happened to a neutron star within 1200 light years of Earth, it could fry off the atmosphere of the planet. Luckily, the closest neutron star of that magnitude is over 60,000 light years away. Story 14. So, it's not just about space, but about physics. Eventually, our universe will undergo heat death. All energy will have been expended, going from a highly active state to an inactive state. Your zappity zap that powers your phone becomes a rock. So, the obvious goals of our species are thus. Zero, develop intelligence. Is still working on this one. Have largely failed so far. One, achieve individual and species-wise immortality. Cure death and prevent extinction. 1a, tell the laws of thermodynamics to get bent. Find a way to prevent heat death. Or 1b, figure out time travel and do it, avoiding heat death. Or 2, meet God, shake his hand, and let him see himself out, because you've achieved godhood. Why is this scary? Because in the end, we, you and I, will not get to see infinity. We will not walk on the rings of far-off planets or see impossible things. We will be forever excluded from humanity's destiny of dancing between suns, untethered from the constraints of frailty and weakness. We will be nothing more than ghosts of legends told in the ages to come, while our oceans burn away and our beaches melt to molten glass. Our descendants may yet inherit eternity, but not you and not I. We will die here on this wretched ball of crap, most likely alone, never to be known by the universe, never to reach beyond ourselves. I gotta say, OP has a way with words. Something about just the way they describe things, I kind of choked up a bit, I'm not gonna lie. But also, the most likely alone, uncalled for OP, so rude. Story 15. The thing about space is there's no air out there. Lots of radiation, gravity wells, or lack thereof. Space is even more hostile than any environment on Earth. So, of course, people want to challenge themselves and explore. But it's incredibly expensive. And people aren't united in seeking space traveler habitats. And there are so many other ways to spend resources that would improve life for people on Earth. Bottom line, space is there. Story 16. The sun might have an evil twin named Nemesis. This stands as a theory, since astronomers have been searching for Nemesis since the 80s. Nemesis has been catapulting asteroids onto Earth's course ever since 26 million years ago or so, meaning Nemesis is to blame for wiping out the dinosaurs. Some believe that the light coming from Nemesis is actually infrared, explaining why nobody on Earth could ever find it, since infrared light is invisible to the human eye. There is reason to believe that yes, Nemesis did exist and is the sun's twin but it has traveled out of orbit and now resides in the Milky Way galaxy. Story 17. A rogue planet could just come hurtling through and end us. All of human history, every achievement, every nation, religion, idea, every bloodline, every place, every ounce of art, every human and every work by human hands and minds, political theories, every one of them. Your favorite restaurant, your least favorite restaurant, your pet, your favorite YouTuber, your childhood home, Every photo of everyone you've ever loved. The legacy of your Purple Heart Medal of Honor grandpa and the 30 men he saved in the war. All of it. 
gone, and any possible action we as a collective species pulling together everything we've got could take in response would be as equally effective at preventing it as you typing out this response right here now would be. Story 18. The Big Rip. It's not probable that our universe would end that way, most likely with heat death, but if it were to happen, it would be the scariest thing. Basically, the expansion of space is accelerating, and if the Big Rip were true, expansion would continually keep accelerating, and it would eventually reach the point where the expansion would overwhelm all fundamental forces of nature, and rip apart the very constituents of our universe. This point is called the Cosmic Event Horizon, CEH, and it exists in our universe. However, it is many billions of light years in diameter, and this is the distance between two galaxies that are traveling away from one another faster than the speed of light. According to the Big Rip, CEH would continue shrinking down to the size of atoms and quarks. First, it would shrink to the size of galaxies, meaning it would overcome gravitational pull of galaxies. So every galaxy would get ripped apart with stars shooting out in all directions, traveling away from each other faster than the speed of light. It would then overcome the gravity holding our solar system together. Then, Earth's own gravity after which our planet would start crumbling. Then, in the final moments, when CEH shrinks to the size of atoms, all of the atoms in the universe would suddenly rip apart into electrons and nuclei. Those nuclei would then rip apart into quarks. And if quarks themselves have constituents, those would eventually rip too. If we looked into the sky, we would see the stars and galaxies slowly start drifting away from one another and disappearing one by one. It would be very creepy. The sky would increasingly grow darker and darker until it reaches us. We and everything around us would then violently dissolve into plasma and then into nothingness. Gone. Just like that. Story 19. There is a non-zero chance that our universe is in a false vacuum state. In fact, some recent measurements of the Higgs field make it appear likely we are in a metastable false vacuum. If the Higgs field were to collapse into a true vacuum state, it's likely all matter would cease to exist. The collapse rolling across the universe at the speed of light. Thankfully, we wouldn't know we were going to stop existing until the bubble collapsed locally here in our corner of the universe. So don't let it keep you up at night. You won't see it coming. While I know I've said for other things in this thread that it's like, oh, you wouldn't know it's coming, it's not that bad. OP adding, you won't see it coming at the end like that was weirdly ominous. It almost sounded like OP was going to do it. At this point, maybe it will keep me up at night. Thanks for that, OP. Anyway, I hope this video of realistic cosmic horror didn't freak you all out too badly. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And if the universe doesn't collapse by tomorrow, I will see you in the next one.